Hello and welcome to Real Talk from Sugar and Beauty Ball. What, what? We're here. <laughs> We're here right, right here right now. This is a really big moment. It is the first time Serenity is sugaring my eyebrows. I'm so honored. <laughs> <laughs> it is so beautiful and I'm so grateful we're finally doing this. I have had a serious emotional attachment to my eyebrows since I was very young. It actually runs in my family. My dad's nickname is Brow because of his unibrow. <laughs> you don't even really have a unibrow. You have really beautiful brows. Like, I'm not touching too much. I'm really not. Just cleaning it up. Yeah, yeah. That's all you need. Amazing. Yeah, it's so interesting because so many things I could talk about with eyebrows, but one of the big things that resonates is them being uneven. And I'm not sure if that was because getting them waxed and threaded at a young age, they just became more and more uneven. So I went through a time where... I well, I guess also now of letting them regrow back, Our and so it's so full. So now that they are more even, I'm so grateful that Serenity can keep them cleaned up for me, and also the fact that the hair closest to the middle grows straight on my face. So I always have to trim it. Um, so it's such an interesting process, and because now we only see people from the mask up in real life. The <laughs> eyebrows are so important. And they really are. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of Zoom chats, especially where I am fortunate enough that I don't need to wear a mask on Zoom. And I've been taking a look at my eyebrows and I'm like, shit, <laughs> I'm overdue. Maybe it's time. <laughs> so I'm so grateful we can give them the love and attention they deserve. Thanks for trusting me, girl. I didn't realize this was the first time. Yes. Such a, a big awakening. So now she's applying the sugar to the inner of my eyebrows. To your unibrow that doesn't exist. <laughs> so much love. Yeah, I've been trying a new technique with uh, using one of my sticks that I will eventually transition out and not be buying anymore. Because um, I'll replace it with reusable um, stainless steel metal. But... Um, one of the things that I tried recently with Allie was using the stick on the upper lip. And I was mm. like, wow, this is such a game changer. Because, I mean, the stick allows me to, like, really kind of pl- apply a lot more pressure than I would mm. normally be able to do with just my finger around your mouth. So I'm very grateful for that um, little tidbit that I was able to try out on Allie just randomly one evening. I was like, this is working. I'm going to keep doing this. I love it. Yeah. Pro tips. Yes. So what else is new, girl? What are we up to? Because you actually probably know way more about what's going on behind the scenes than I do. With Sugar Beauty Bar? With Sugar Beauty Bar. Oh, girl, don't get me started. We're going to be here all day. (laughs) Well, the really, really exciting news is we have interns. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited that our team is growing and filled with really passionate, excited curious like knowledgeable people it's so amazing to be able to bring these amazing diverse perspectives together in a way that we can create and cultivate our magic together and really share the love virtually yes it's been really cool i'm really excited to see kind of like where everybody's road kind of takes them because everybody's also just so different and such different walks of life mm. that i feel like it's it's we're a really good team absolutely dream team over here and i truly trust that everything happens for a reason and the people that come you know on our journey and our path are here for a special purpose to teach and learn from each other So the way we found this amazing group of people was just from posting on LinkedIn. So that was really cool that this group came together in that way. And we're working on everything from creating resources to continue educating our community on what the unique value is that we're providing here in this really safe space, as well as sharing the word and making it in flow so we can expand and really create create 
a space of belonging virtually, but also in real life as we continue to grow. Yes. And I feel like the pandemic has really forced us to think that way, you know, outside the box. Like if I close down tomorrow, how do I stay connected with my community? Mm. You know, because this is not just about sugaring for me. It's about having this holistic approach to building up the sisterhood and teaching each other to take care of each other and look out for one another and you know as that continues to grow it's like how do we reinvent that wheel of making people still feel secure and safe and comfortable and happy and excited to get up and do you know kick ass (laughs) literally and I feel like self-care is such a big part of this and also segueing into February is how can we continue the love inside ourselves and then create that ripple effect within our communities both in real life and online so it really all stems from within when we align with that energy and connect with ourselves in this way it's so special and when we foster that foundation it really shows and I mean I as we've been talking about have been deepening our personal foundations of this self-care practice and it's so transformational and people really notice the difference when somebody walks into the room and they're grounded. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like that shift when you're able to finally get to that place is so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And it's like just trusting yourself to get to that place and actually take ownership when things don't look the way that you want them to look or things aren't working out the way that you want them to work out and still finding that deeper inner meaning of like, all right, why am I struggling with this right now? Why is this person not receiving the message that I'm really trying to deliver? And why am I receiving the message in the way that, that it's being delivered, you know? That's so deep and reminding me of a few things. Um, but what's really coming to mind is I have really deep talks with my families at dinner. Um, our dinner table conversations always extend beyond when the meal is finished. And I was talking to my cousins and I'm like, um, how am I not being clear? Like, can you explain, you know, what's not landing? And they're like, Jamie, you're so clear. Like you couldn't be more clear. It's just, you know, we're not ready for that. Mm-hmm. And I think honoring and respecting that everyone has their own unique timelines here on this adventure of life. So you might be clear, you might be conveying your message, and it's only going to land with the people that are open and ready to receive it. So if it's not landing with someone or your community is small, it's better to have quality over quantity. And I'm constantly reminding myself in our community that, especially as we're growing online with new platforms like Clubhouse and everything in between, it is not about the quantity. It is certainly about the quality. So how can you keep coming back to what are your values and how do you want to continue growing together in a way that provides unique value and substance? Because if you're just doing it for the numbers, like why, why are you doing that? Yeah, I'll use my little sister as an example. Um, She's going through some stuff and my my automatic defense mode is always like, I don't want her to mess up the way that I messed up. I want her you know, to live better and do better. I want her to be more informed, especially because of the day that we're living in. Like you can Google and get information at the tip of your fingers. There's no reason why you shouldn't not be able to achieve knowledge about something. You know, mm-hmm. if you can't find it, you will find somebody who can tell you more about it. You know, that's how I feel. Um, and she's just not that kid. So I was talking with my other sister and we were both just realizing that like the way, the best way that we can support her is to just constantly keep asking her about her mental health. You know, what does she do for herself today? What self love is she, you know, practicing today? What did you eat today? Did you drink water today? And come from that space instead of the, did you do your homework? Oh, you're behind on an assignment. Oh, what's wrong with you? Like, what is the point of that, you know? And it's it's taken me a really long time to get to that place because I feel like we were so, we were raised to be such tough love kids with my mom that that was the automatic default. Mm-hmm. Go back to this place where you're screaming and you're yelling and you're angry because you want them to see how hurt you are that they're going to change their their personality or they're going to change their character when they really need softness. They really need that like I'm going to wrap my arms around you and I hope you ate today and I hope you're doing okay and you got this. You know, for them to be like, all right, I do got this. 
I'm going to go take that test or I'm going to go study or I'm going to go do the whatever. So I was talking with, with Val tonight and like the earlier today and I was like, that's really my takeaway. It's like, we have to show up for her with such kindness that when she's ready to be her best self, that she can come back and be like, I fucking get it. I get it. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that resonates on so many levels, especially because we need that foundation. And although it might be new for some people to check in on that deeper level of, you know, did you nourish your body? Are you hydrated? Did you give yourself a hug today? Right. How can you practice that self-compassion and seeing how it translates to everything else we do is such an example of why it's important and needs to be a foundational practice for everyone. Yeah, it's it's so crucial and like I can just relate this particular scenario to just so many other avenues of my life. It's like how do I show up for my friends that are going through a tough moment? Mm. You know, it's just to come back with kindness and remind them of of their super strength, which is to focus on themselves. You know, like that is your superpower is to take care of the inner you. And if you're not practicing that regularly, you're gonna fall off. You know, and I feel like we're falling off, but we don't realize that we're falling off. Mm-hmm. We're just like, this person did this to me, and I'm feeling this type of way, when actually you let this person do this to you, and you're taking away from what you should be learning from the experience. Yeah, I mean, every person that comes into our life is a learning lesson, so how can we keep asking ourselves what this is here to teach us? A reason or a season. <laughs> <laughs> I also love that superpower analogy and something that is so empowering as we continue to deepen these practices of self-love and self-care is that super me. So how can you connect with your super me? And even if you just do that superhero pose of putting your hands on your hips and standing tall and taking a deep breath, it's such a great foundational practice. I love to do this in the morning or before you know an important meeting or something like that. So if somebody's taking a test or something similar, doing a superhero pose is such a great way to signal to your body that you're ready and you're in tune with your intuition. Yes, and I feel like we were talking about this earlier with your mentor. Um, about the idea of, you know, something sounding weird to others. So you kind of just don't do it because you're like, oh, that sounds off. And it's weird that you actually commented on that because while she was talking about, you know, this thing that she avoided because she just didn't feel the right energy, I was like, that sounds like a crazy person. Like I, I judged. I was totally judging in that moment. And as you said it, I was like, why did you, why did you go there? You know, but we're so conditioned to see something that's not normal or something that doesn't resonate with who we are and what we do in our daily tasks that we're like, okay, we'll just leave her in the corner over there when really that corner is like the good space. Mm. (laughs) You know, that corner is the light. That corner is your like underbelly telling you, all right, something feels off. And like, we keep pushing it down. We keep pushing it down. We keep acting like it doesn't exist. And it's showing up in so many different areas of my life. One example with my mother who does this and I, and I, I don't acknowledge it. I don't acknowledge that that's what she's doing. And now that I can, I wasn't now that I can, um, it's really enlightening to see how hurt people are Mm -hmm. and that's why they're pushing and suppressing and and not like embracing and trying to like feed into that energy because that's what we've been trained to do from such a small age. That is so deep on so many levels. And I think the main takeaway is trusting our intuition and not suppressing it to fit in with the quote unquote people we're trying to connect with in that way. Because when we do follow our our intuition and trust that deeper knowing, it's often leading us in the right direction of where we're supposed to be. And I know we were talking about this separately as well of like, our physical body giving us signals that something needs to shift and when we ignore that it Mm -hmm. is getting worse so we were talking about our solar plexus and different areas of our body that are screaming you know red flag don't do this stop and then when we ignore it 
And then it gets worse. We're like, why is this happening? You know, let me, you know, take all these coping things. Right. And then we try to cope. And then it's frustrating. You know, why are we still feeling this? It's like, oh, well, we keep ignoring the root problem. Right. And we saying this out loud. Beginning. Yeah. It's reminding me of, you know, just our culture and the way people are, you know, treating the symptoms, but not the root. And that's why I'm so grateful for the safe space we're creating here at Sugared Beauty Bar to really get down to the root, literally, of your hair growth process, <laughs> but also the root problems of what's causing you pain. Why is there a block in your energy flow? And how can you really give that the love and attention it needs to create that natural flow? I think we even have to go a step further in acknowledging that you're feeling that feeling. Mm -hmm. because it's like if you don't even know that what you're feeling is a certain element related to what you're doing what you're eating what you're smelling what you're seeing every day etc then you're never even going to tackle those root issues Mm -hmm. you know you're never going to turn off the television you're never going to stop the the binge watching you're never going to stop the crazy terrible foods if you don't realize that the foods are driving you the television is driving you. Mm-hmm. The disconnection is driving you. The Instagram scrolling is driving oh. you. Like you're never gonna like come to that space if you don't acknowledge that. Why am I wanting to go scroll or watch or eat this particular thing? You know, it's that intuitive eating, that intuitive exercise, that intuitive movement, that intuitive whatever it is that we should be using as our guiders, but like we get into these crazy jobs where we have to sit at our desk all day or we've got kids and we have to run around behind or, you know, we've got a parent that we have to take care of or like life gets in the way and we stop focusing on what's intuitive and we start focusing on what is like time consuming, like what, what, what's time sensitive. All right. Got to jump here. Got to jump there. Got to jump here. Got to jump there. Instead of, all right, take a breath. All right. What am I feeling today? Mm. We don't know what we're feeling today because we're just doing literally we're just going like oh. i got a full book i'm gonna starting at 5 a.m and i'm done at eight and i'll have dinner and then clean and then do the dishes and then go to bed and like clockwork here we go again. wow that is so important i feel like so many of our people are on autopilot mm-hmm. and how do we take a moment to reboot and notice what is just like this hamster wheel of doing. And what someone said on a chat recently was like a busy badge. And Mm. when I heard that language, I was like, wow, everyone's fighting for this busy badge. Right. For what? Who's busier? Yeah. Who has more going on? Who's had more collaboration? Who has more followers? It's just like more, 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 more. And one of my things that I've noticed through this deeper reflection is the story of not enough. I'm not mm. good enough. I don't have enough this. And it's like, well, how much more do you fucking need? <laughs> <laughs> so coming back to the present moment and expressing gratitude for what we do have. And gratitude practice has been something that really helps me get centered and come back. And through the work that we're doing with our community, we're meeting so many people in all walks of life that just ground me in their stories and their journeys and it reminds me to be so immensely grateful for what we have and as if you know being grateful isn't enough I have a shirt that says gratitude and I was wearing it as my undershirt many days just to like (laughs) emphasize that even you know under this outfit under my jacket and layers for the cold weather I am grateful yeah and that's the first layer Right, right. And you know what? And that's what works for you. Mm -hmm. You know, that looks different for so many people where you're like, I'm going to wear the word (laughs) so that I can channel and remind myself that I am this. You know, where other people need it to be written on a wall or they need to physically write it down or they need a journal or they need to say it out loud or they need to look in the mirror and say it to themselves. Like so many different ways of what this looks like. And I feel like that's a part of the issue is that certain things are highlighted And, like, that's what you think it's supposed to look like. That's my struggle, which I thought with yoga. Yoga is supposed to look a certain way. And if you don't look this way, then you can't do it. When it's really just about stretching. Like, yoga is stretching. Your body hurts. You should be doing yoga. Like, that's literally what what goes on for me. And it's, like, it took me all of these years to come to that space where I was, like, 
I've been stretching all this time. <laughs> now I'm just doing it on a mat, guided by some stretches that are going to make me feel even better than when I was stretching by myself. Mm-hmm. And But I didn't know what it looked like because I thought that what I was seeing was the only version of how it worked. So I feel I love that you're saying, like, I wore the shirt. And it's like sometimes we need to wear the shirt. You know, it's not the reminder for the person looking at it, but it's the reminder for yourself who put it on. So I really love that you shared that because it does look so different for so many people. And it's not a cookie cutter. There's no right way to self-love. It's what the fuck works for you. <laughs> Literally. And that's so important. And yoga is a great example, but really any topic, anything that you are putting value in your attention towards trust that the way that it resonates for you is how it should be appearing on your journey because we're each a unique snowflake so it's going to feel different for everyone and yoga is such a great example because even just in my mind's eye right now like literal photos of beautiful women in bikinis doing extravagant yoga poses, levitating on the beach is what comes to yeah, mind. And that's, it's like, why? Why is that? And what maybe comes to that's mind? the goal, but also it's not my goal. I don't need to get like, I don't need to be sponsored by a, by a, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I don't need to be that girl on the beach. Um, but I still want to yeah. feel that way, you know, and it, it does create a feeling which, I feel like it's a part of the issue. We see the image and then we feel something. And for me, that feeling was, I don't belong there Mm -hmm. because the image doesn't resonate with me. I'm not close to a beach. I don't look like these people. I can't do these poses. And it didn't seem like it was something that was like for people who don't look like me. I was like, "Ah, okay. And I mean, now that's changed a lot. There's definitely a lot of things that we can go to look at. But if you Google yoga, I mean, the bodies are not of all different shapes and sizes. You have to go specifically looking for that, you know? So it's just, it's going to look different, and that's a part of the exploration. It's, like, Mm -hmm. not focusing on what looks shiny and what other people are doing, but, like, what actually sparks joy within myself? What actually makes me happy? If it's putting on your Grateful T-shirt, fucking wear that T-shirt all week. You know, like, do what you got to do to get yourself to that place where you're like, this makes me so happy. I am luckily (laughs) doing all of those things simultaneously because my job is, my hobby is, my Mm -hmm. love is my baby is my project is my there's so many things the words go on but not everybody gets a chance to do what I'm doing you know where I actually enjoy what I'm doing I love what I'm doing it doesn't feel like a job little percentage of it and I'm working on that but it's it's such a beautiful journey and I and I I pray for more people to to find that you know like and I want more people to find that through us um and continue that growth because my yoga instructor is my client and I met her at my previous job where I was like, oh, you do yoga? Can you tell me, like, where I can do this? Like, you, it's not like that quiet, like, meditation music that wants to put you to sleep. She's like, no, we listen to other stuff, too. And I was like, Aww. okay, I'm down. <laughs> Let's do this. But my perception of it was so wrong, and that was why I never explored it. You know, so the exploration is super, super key. I love that. And having the opportunity to explore with an open mind and get curious to see what else is out there and what resonates with you. Yeah. Like I never really saw myself as somebody who would like going to the gym as often as I do. I'm not a gym rat. I don't ever consider myself to be one, but I'm like, I'm realizing that I need that to feel good. You know, it's not something that I like doing, but I need to do it. Because it makes me feel good when I'm done, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like channeling in on that level as well, where it's not always the things that you, that are going to like make you excited to do them. But like when you're done doing them, you're like, I fucking needed that. Yes. Like, yeah. That was so good that I went to the gym or now I pass through the grocery store on my way home and like, I'll pick up a couple of things here and there. And like, all right, I'm taking care of my body tonight. Mm-hmm. Tonight I'm taking care of my body. And that has been a really good, like, mental headspace to kind of escape to because I'm like, we don't have much right now. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. We don't get to go see our friends and do all the crazy, wonderful things that we're used to doing from before. The weather is not really warm yet. So, like, your solitude really is, has to become your happy place, you know, especially if you live on your own. And even if you live with a partner, I feel like your solitude should be, like, a part of your happy place because your partner should not be your 100% form of happiness you know. Absolutely. And that solitude and that self-love is the foundation for everything. So we can show up fully with our partners Mm -hmm. and other people in our lives. Yeah. 
Yeah. And self-care is, like, the biggest job. <laughs> Literally. I mean, that's, like, what we're here to do. Like, we need to take care of ourselves. It's, like, our one responsibility. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, as humans. Mm-hmm. Like, that's... You're so right. I never even thought about it from that angle. It's, like, you have one job. Just try to live your happiest. Survive. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that's been a part of the issue is that we have called it survival. Mm. You know, we're like, yeah, just go. You got to hustle. You got to keep moving. The weak die. And like we take away the fun in trying to just find yourself because we're like survival is is dirty. It's Mm. gritty. It is hard. It is not surrendering to yourself. It is doing what everybody else is doing. Like that's what survival looks like. It's like you're running fucking game of the thrones like you're literally trying to protect what's yours and if we stop acting like we needed to protect everything and we could just be we would feel better but that's our mode it's like protection that's why we've got the constitution of rights that's why we have our own countries that's why we have our own states and our own streets and our own this and that. like we can just be you know you're human i'm human we bleed you know we hurt we cry we die like it's it's that simple and if we can come from that space of okay like maybe if i opened up a little bit mm. somebody else will open up a little bit and then we'll all open up a little bit <laughs> just open a little it. bit <laughs> i love it yeah we need to open up and really make space in our heart to open up our minds to open up and everyone else will have that ripple effect of slowly right. opening up right. a little bit right right and it's like i feel like that's a part of the the, the winning factor here you know it's like you are the best example for something that you're trying to show others mm-hmm. you know and if you're not setting that example then you can't expect it from others and you can't get it from others you know so it's like trying to show up in the way that you want them to show up for you I feel like is so crucial because it's like you're, you're protecting your little bubble you know you're telling yourself all right maybe they just don't understand it and that's okay they don't have to get you. They don't have to be like you. They don't have to understand you. They don't even have to accept you. But you're accepting that that's exactly who they are. Mm. That they're not doing any of those things for you. But you've come to that conclusion like, all right, cool. Like you said, maybe it's not their time. But maybe it'll never be their time. And that has to be okay too. Maybe they're never jumping on this bandwagon with me. That's okay. <laughs> I don't need you on my bandwagon. <laughs> Yeah. I got lots of people on my bandwagon, you know, and but starting with myself, mm-hmm. you know, I'm on the bandwagon and this makes the most sense to me. So it doesn't have to make sense to everybody else. And I feel like that's a part of that struggle where we are looking for validation. We want people to like us. So we jump on other people's bandwagons and it's like, they don't even know what their bandwagon looks like. So it's, it's, it's just weird. It's just, it's, it's not serving you, but you stay because you get used to it. And then it becomes a tradition. Then you can't leave because now you've got a good routine. And now it's the middle of a fucking pandemic. So nobody's going anywhere. Or a lot of people are going somewhere. But yeah. Wow. So many layers. What really is sticking out to me is, you know, we don't need other people to like us if we like ourselves. Right. And we're on our wagon. Right. Right. Like, you don't. You, You literally don't. And the thing is... If you focused less on the fact that they didn't like you and more on the fact that you liked you enough, there'll be people lined up down the road to come check out your energy. And that's literally what's happening here. Like, I feel that happening here. That I'm like, stay in my lane, focus on what I'm really, really good at, and that shows in everything that we do. From people who've been coming to the house to people who are just brand new off the street to people who've been referred, it's like, huh, we're here. Okay. We like this, you know? So it's just, just focusing on yourself. Like this was built out of me, you know? And that is what I find really cool. And, and also scary. Cause it's like, this is all of my babies are here. <laughs> my ovaries, my pinky toes, like everybody is in this space. And I love it because it's been so receptive, but I think that's just coming from me just continuing to just flow. You know, and not worrying about what everybody else is doing and what other sugarists are doing and what other this place and that place. It's like, just focus on, like, your community. Mm. You know, and if that is your drive and that's your heart, that's what people are going to feel. You know, and give back to it. Because you didn't get here from nowhere. You know, like, people helped to lift me to get into this place. And I, 
I'm forever grateful from the bottom of my heart just that I can even be physically here, like alive, you know, doing what I'm doing and like loving it and killing it. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Infinite gratitude. <laughs> Absolutely. Every day. Wow. Every day. And I really appreciate how you're finding your flow and what advice would you have for others that aren't even sure what flow is? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I asked my baby sister, I'll answer this in a roundabout way, but I asked my baby sister to make a list of the things, two things, things that she's good at and things that she likes to do. And I think they're very different. There are certain things you're naturally really, really good at that you might not like doing, but you're good at them. Mm. And then there are things that you really love to do that you might not necessarily be the best at, but you love it. Like, I love making jewelry. I'm not a fucking jeweler. <laughs> but that's another element of my life that I love doing things with my hands, very crafty. And I've always been that way, but I have a creative eye, but I would never call myself an expert in any of those things. It's like, this is just what I really love doing, but it's not necessarily what I'm good at that I can actually like project into my life in terms of like my goals, my financial freedom, et cetera. So what am I good at? I'm good at talking with people. I'm good at listening. And this job helps me do both of those things at the exact same time. So I think when you start with that list of what you're good at and what you really love to do, you'll begin to create your flow mm. because you start with the two things that actually are your driving forces. Like your default is what you're good at, not what you love. That's your default. So if you can find, figure out what those two or three things on either side look like, then you start the flow because you have your balance. What you're good at is what you're going to make money doing. And what you love is where you're going to find your balance. When you're done making your money, you do what you love. But you got to figure out what those two things are so that you can kind of create the balance for yourself. If not, you're kind of just like sitting in limbo, doing all the things that you're good at and not finding the things that you really love to do. Mm. And then you're at that disconnect and then you hate your job, even though you're really good at it. Well, mm. reprogramming to <laughs> exit the default mode. <laughs> <laughs> like, and your strength is what you're good at. So I, you never want to lose that, but you don't want to abuse it. Mm. You want it to be just full enough that if it tipped over it's like there's still room in there you're okay if you got to live like that but it's not your forever mode it's not your always on mode that downtime that yoga that arts and crafts that chilling with your girlfriend that netflix and chill whatever it is it's like what do you love doing make sure you're also adding that into what you're really good at but wow. i think that's where you find your career path and also where you find your balance to balance out that career path because there's going to be things that are even in this business that I don't love doing. You know, I love my job, but I don't love every aspect of my job. And some parts of my job is really draining, but it's like, I love doing what I'm doing. And as long as I can have that balance where I go to yoga, I go to the gym, I, you know, see my family, I chat, check in with my siblings. Like that is what brings it all whole together. Magical. So magical. Sugar, sugar. <laughs> From the south. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, that whole reprogramming, and that really resonates for me because before I joined this bandwagon full time, I was doing that autopilot of what I was good at, and I just felt like I was on this hamster wheel because I had to be. Right. But you don't have to do anything. Right, right. And I mean, obviously, there's there's different means of, of operation for people. You know, some people have to do what they have to do until they can do better. And I do acknowledge that. There's not everybody that's going to be able to quit their 9 to 5 and go chase their dreams. But it's like, if you start to incorporate the things that allow you to chase those dreams, that at least you're working towards it. As mm -hmm. opposed to just complaining and being mad and angry and bitter towards the space where you are right now. It's like, is this a stepping stone or no? If it's not a stepping stone and this is where you have to stay and live so that you can feed and provide for your family, then where's the balance? What else is making you super happy so that you can go to that happy place and balance out that stuff that you physically have to do in order to survive? Nobody's saying quit the job, but it's how do we create that balance? What do you need to be eating? How do you want to feel? Where do you want to be? 
How do you want others to see you? Because you don't want to be that recycling story of I hate my job, I hate my life, and everything's so terrible. It's like, all right, what can we do every day? 1%. Every day just to get to that place where we're like, all right, I got this. I love the 1% too because if you do 1% change every single day for a year, that's 365%. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't know where I heard that, but it really resonated with me when I heard the 1%. It was like, okay, we're not asking for 360. We're not asking for 180. We're not even asking for 50%. We're just saying 1% a day. Just to get you a little closer to that pivotal moment of whatever that looks like for you. Just 1%. Oh, I love it. And the thing, well, like one of my pet peeves is complaining. So when we're thinking about shadow work, it's like, how does what triggers us demonstrate an unmet need in ourselves? Mm. And when we find ourselves in those cycles of whatever, with this example of complaining, I identify that as my unmet need to relax if I see people complaining. It's like, oh, that's bothering me because I don't let myself complain Mm -hmm. because I, whatever. So it's a whole thing, but I think part of the reason why I'm anti-complaining is because I notice the power of our language and the same way we were talking about gratitude expanding our possibilities is the same way complaining creates our scariest Mm -hmm. nightmare right because we're speaking it into being right right and that was actually one of the things that I was talking about with the girl that I had a coaching session with yesterday um where it's like your thoughts are driving your feelings and if you can change your thoughts then you'll change how you're feeling about those thoughts Mm -hmm. and I was like that was heavy don't do that again (laughs) (laughs) um I need a moment also stay back (laughs) It was, it was a lot. And I, I literally, I, I, I drove to yoga sitting on that. And then I went through my yoga practice sitting on that. And I was like, what do we need to do to steer this conversation differently? You know, and this is even just stuff at home. This is stuff with my family. But it's like, how can I show up in the way that I need them to for me mm-hmm. so that I can see them in this light? And I'm not saying don't feel those emotions of, you know, whatever is going on that's negative. But it's like, How do we shift that conversation and how do I shift my reaction to the conversation? Because they're still going to be exactly the way that they are, you know, but like, how can I shift my movement so that I'm not being affected in the negative way that is happening, you know, and that really set home for me. I was like, I have the fucking power to do this. (laughs) Me. I have the power to shift how I'm feeling. They didn't make me feel this way. I'm feeling this way because I'm reacting to something that they did. But also, what's the reaction? What am I taking away from that reaction? Why am I reacting this way? But it's like, that work is hard work. Because you got to check yourself. you got to literally be like, why are you feeling defensive? Why are you feeling unmet? Why are you feeling hostile? What, what, where, where are those feelings being drawn in from? What thought is giving me that feeling? Mm-hmm. Oh, that thought is, well, they don't support me. They don't appreciate me. Well, why do you feel that way? Is it true? Is it? That's literally what my coach was asking me. And I was like, um, of course they support me, but like, I'm not feeling that way. And that was a part of the problem was that I turned this one thing and this is why I feel like she took my mark, but I feel this one thing and now I've made it mean something else. Mm -hmm. When the truth is, it's not that they don't support me. It's that. I'm feeling tension between the conversation that we're having and it's around a particular subject that is very like heavy for me. And instead of dealing with it, I'm like, they don't support me. That's why you're doing this to me. (laughs) Wow. It was so powerful. It's so powerful. And I think also honoring that everyone has their own journey with like doing this deeper work Mm because we're like, deep sea scuba diving like that scene in Nemo where it's so dark and then there's only that teeny tiny light and then they chase the light and it's the big fish monster like that's how deep we are in the depths of discovery but this is the self-discovery of noticing that we have the power Mm -hmm. our thoughts we are the control panel and uh, thank you for the Disney references (laughs) 
the movie Inside Out, where all of the emotions are on the control panel, mm-hmm. we get to say, okay, sadness, you're pushing all the buttons. Right. They do support me. Move out of the way and have mm-hmm. the rational dialogue coming through and then really decoding what's really happening because like we were saying earlier we can't change other people but we can change ourselves right 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 we can change how we show up with that person Mm -hmm. and like that was something that I knew but I was not practicing and it's like if you're coming from that space and not that you're always going to be 24 24 hours a day seven days a week coming from that space but if you're reminding yourself to go to that space when you're feeling what you're feeling, it's like, all right, sit with this, shut the fuck up, that's not real, let's keep it moving. You know, go do your workout, go do whatever makes you really happy or what you're really good at. Like, fine tune those moods so that you can shift out of it quicker than going into that downward spiral of, they don't love me, they don't want, they don't respect me, they don't want me to be happy, they don't blah, 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 blah. Unless there's physical abuse, like that's a totally different situation. You know, nobody should be harming you in any shape, way, or form, especially physically or verbally, but addressing whether the things that are being, that you're feeling are truthful. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where you start. That's so important. Wow. I'm really grateful that we have this safe space at Sugar Beauty Bar to have these deep (laughs) talks while we're we're removing hair. It's so important, but it's literally like exfoliating and getting rid of what's no longer needed. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody mentioned that today in their appointment. They're just like, I really love this because, like, it's not just removing the hair, but it's exfoliating my skin. I'm like, get that dead shit out of here, girl. (laughs) Shed those layers. Literally. (laughs) Figuratively and, like, everything. But I really love my room. I really love the space that we created here. And... I mean, some days I cry with my clients. Some days I, I, I have to step out because, like, some of the emotions are just so much. But I feel like that is a part of the space, you mm-hmm. know? Like, that comfort level and that security and that trust and that energy is why people feel safe enough to do these things, you know? And I just love that because if, if I want for anything, it's for people to feel more vulnerable. If we can tap more into that space and that feeling... I feel like our worlds would just be better, you know, if we can allow ourselves to be more vulnerable, but we don't, we don't, we we usually don't. It's, it's, that's like reserved for a very, very special person. And I don't feel like it should only be that person. And that's so important. And I appreciate you bringing it up because we need to be vulnerable with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if that's the teeny tiny opening that can be the ripple effect of our conversation is let's open up with ourselves and deepen that yeah self-discovery yeah yeah it's just allowing yourself giving yourself that permission to just be vulnerable because so much comes out of it (laughs) so much we're discovering in the depths of everything and i'm just so grateful for this space and and you and your heart opening absolutely so excited we have so many amazing things about to kick off and I feel like this is just, this is like a sliver of a layer. <laughs> Not even a full <laughs> This is one grain of hair. <laughs> <laughs> one hair follicle. Literally. <laughs> just the bulb. <laughs> On the hair follicle. Literally. And we're, I mean, I think this is a great seed we're planting for the month of February and all of the love to come. Yeah. Yeah, we want to share more love, so... I feel like giving it in the month of February when most people associate themselves with love, this will carry on into the rest of the year. But I feel like starting it in February and just having services and having people come in together, offering, you know, the Reiki services with people's bestie slash partner appointments is just going to really allow people to also see us as a space that's not just hair removal, um, which is not what we only are. And a lot of people know that, but a space where they can come and also relax and feel calm and get that treatment that is now touchless and hands-free um so that's like really cool I feel like being able to add those services in where there might be some people that feel very iffy about coming in for you know services where they have to be touched and being able to offer the services that you offer Rose I feel like is is going to be that next level of like all right guys we know that it's scary out there but this is where you're safe yes oh 
And I appreciate that so much because I feel like the fear is what's blocking the vulnerability. Mm. Like the fear is building that wall and we're all just like hiding in our turtle shells. It's like, no, it's yeah. safe out of here. Come. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And I mean, the world is just, it's really messed up right now, you know? And I feel like we need community and that's what we're building. We're building community around our clientele, around our social media presence, around our collaborations. It's like working with other, other you know, boss women, um, other women of color, other people of color. It's like just being able to tap into the things that already make sense to us and already fit into our culture and what we're doing here. Um, so I'm excited. It's, there's so many beautiful things happening. It's, it's like, it almost makes me cry every day. Like I'm so, so freaking unbelievably, incredibly grateful for just everything. I'm literally like gonna cry. (laughs) (laughs) Just everything. Wow, it just doesn't feel real. And I mean, even just looking around the studio room and how it's transformed since our last (laughs) chat, I'm like, this is real. (laughs) Like, this actually happened. (laughs) We're living it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Wow. We are. We really are. So special. All right, girl, let's do that under. Let's do that upper lip. Since we're transfer, uh, Transferring? Transferring to a different service. Yeah, transferring to the lip service. Um, it's not going to be the best for me talking. So we're going to plug plug the conversation here and pick it up soon. But I'm so grateful, um, as that has been the theme of this chat and our daily lives, that we are able to connect in this way. Sending so much love and light your way. Bye, guys. Bye.